Welcome to the State of Ohio. I'm Karen Kassler. This week brought a close to one chapter for Ohio's nuclear power plant bailout law, but another could be starting. The law would create $150 million in annual subsidies for Ohio's two nuclear power plants starting in 2021 and running for 10 years. It would generate hundreds of millions of dollars for two coal plants, one in Indiana. And it would roll back renewable energy requirements on utilities and eliminate the mandate for power companies to reduce their energy use. The group fighting against the bailout and these other measures mounted a last-minute push for signatures. And as Statehouse correspondent Andy Chow reports, their fight ultimately landed in federal court. Keep it in the black box, mm -hmm. sign there, and then you print after that. Rachel Bells went all out, setting up a petition signing station at Land Grant Brewery near downtown Columbus. This was part of a statewide effort to gather last-minute signatures, for a referendum that would put the nuclear power plant bailout law up for a vote on next year's ballot. In this final stretch, people have been really upset that they haven't gotten a chance or haven't found anybody with a real petition yet. Friends of mine, allies, I mean, pe people that would normally have signed it weeks ago, but they haven't been able to find it because of all these tactics. Ohioans against corporate bailouts was behind the signature effort. The donors of the group aren't known, but its spokesperson has said it's the same consumer groups, business groups, and renewable energy advocates who opposed House Bill 6, which created the bailout. People lined up to sign the petition in the last weekend before the deadline to turn those signatures in. Bells says they had to start holding these signing events in private venues, like this brewery, to avoid their opponents, who hired people that allegedly harassed, followed and blocked circulators from gathering signatures. I think the opposition's tactics are incredibly slimy. Among their opposition is Ohioans for Energy Security and Generation Now, two dark money groups with connections to the power plant's owners, First Energy Solutions, and to House Speaker Larry Householder, a chief backer of the bailout. The line between those two groups blurred during this march, organized by Ohioans for Energy Security, but featured workers for Generation Now. This march ended with Ohioans for Energy Security delivering what they claimed were more than 846,000 signatures for their own petition, which carries no legal backing or penalty for fraudulent signatures. That ensures the reliability and security of our energy grid. Ohioans for Energy Security spokesperson Carlo Laparo has tied the referendum effort to the natural gas industry and wants lawmakers to continue changing energy law by banning foreign companies from investing in energy generation. So there are two well-funded competing sides, though the side fighting to keep the bailout seem to have more money and personnel than those trying to repeal it. Those two sides collided again this week. That's because the push from Bells and others against the nuclear power plant bailout fell short of the 266,000 valid signatures they needed to trigger a referendum. So Ohioans against corporate bailouts took their case to federal court, asking for more time to collect signatures. Here's how the argument breaks down. The Ohio Constitution grants 90 days for a group to try to referendum a law before it goes into effect. But Ohio law requires the Ohio Attorney General to approve petition language first. By the time the AG approved the group's second draft, 38 days had passed, giving the group only 52 days to collect signatures. That's why their lawyer said they had the right to more time. But the state's attorneys argue that this is the same process every referendum effort has faced for more than 80 years. In his ruling, U.S. District Court Judge Edmund Sargis denied the request for more time. But he did send lingering questions on the issue to the Ohio Supreme Court, suggesting that the state's high court had jurisdiction over the argument. So as of now, the law created through HB 6 is in effect. The bill sponsor says saving the nuclear power plants and making changes to Ohio's green energy policies are a better investment for the state. Uh, so it's good for the environment, it's good for jobs, uh, it's good for the infrastructure that's there, it's good for the tax base. If you look at the school systems, for example, where these uh, the two current nuclear power plants are, davis Bessey and Perry, uh, th there'd be a, a devastating economic impact on those communities if those plants shut down. But the book isn't closed on HB6 yet. Ohioans Against Corporate Bailouts is reviewing its options to take the case to the Ohio Supreme Court. Andy Chow, State House News Bureau.